Hi, my name is Anton Pelcher. I'm an engineer and I've been constructing fish farms for more than 10 years. Today we're going to talk about a very interesting topic, one of my favorite ones, how to choose the right type of fish for farming. If you have already been interested in this topic, sooner or later you have a question. Certainly, growing fish is cool and exciting. But the question is how to choose the type of fish, and even more, how to choose the proper farm capacity, that is, what you should farm and how much fish you should grow in racks. Well, today let's just try to figure it out and talk about it in detail, so that you put such questions to rest once and for all. Watch this video to the end, because after we discuss the issues related to the choice of fish species, we will also sort out the seven major mistakes and life hacks on how to decide on the right type of fish, as well as farm capacity. And also, we will start talking about special farming aspects of major fish species. So today we will take a closer look at growing sturgeons and wrasse. Well, you are kind of interested in this topic, and the logical question arises – what to grow and how much? And that's what you can't understand. It's actually a normal and quite natural question. It's necessary to understand that. And the first thing I would like to ask you – what kind of business do you want? Are you planning a relatively large-scale business when you hire employees? Or is it self-employment? This is very important in order to decide not even so much on the type of fish, but on the capacity of your farm, though the type of fish is significant as well. Let's imagine that it's the first option. You want to grow fish yourself. You sort of having some minor resources, you sell it yourself and earn something from it. Just some minimal income. Ok, then farming 5-10 tons of sturgeon per year is fine, because sturgeon is marginal. Of course, 5-10 tons is not much, but it's enough for you and you'll make some profit from this business if you do everything by yourself and sell fish in retail rather than wholesale. And the second option is if you want a full-fledged, serious business. And this is where I will give you completely different advice. If you are intending to farm sturgeon, then it won't be 5-10 tons. If you want to hire people and pay them salaries, you need to farm at least 20-30 tons of sturgeon to get some decent net profit. And the optimal option is 4-50 tons, so we make more or less tangible profit. Therefore, this is a completely different format in terms of the farm capacity. And the second thing that is also very important to consider is the following. If you have a site or even a building, you have to evaluate them in terms of area and in terms of possibilities, because each plot in each building has its limitations. Limitations on electricity, heating, possible options of wastewater discharge, on a borehole, on the availability of the water in general. Just for example, if you have a 500 square meters building and you want to grow 100 tons of sturgeon, you won't be able to. If you only have 500 square meters, you can farm just 15 tons of sturgeon. You can be sure to grow that amount but not 100 tons. And it's very important to understand that if you have limitations in terms of area, infrastructure, then that's it. Those are the limitations that you have. Either you look for another site and building, or you expand somehow using a different format. Thirdly, I recommend assessing your financial possibilities. It's better to do this in advance. For example, how you are going to expand if you just to put some kind of the first trust line now. That is to say, you should clearly understand how you are going to develop your business afterwards. If you have a certain investor, clear understanding of the investment's amount, and you want to just drive this business together with him in order to expand later on, that's great, wonderful. If you have found a bank which has approved you enough credit funds, that's also great. If you have your own funds, that's perfect. But nevertheless, Nevertheless, it's important to assess the possibilities in advance. Fourth, estimate your desired income. Sometimes potential clients tell me, Anton, I want to earn 15,000 US dollars a month. I answer them, OK, how much are you ready to invest? And the expected investment amount is 65, 70,000 US dollars. To invest 70,000 US dollars and to get net profit of 15,000 US dollars a month. Frankly, I don't know what kind of business they should invest in. It might be arms trafficking, probably drugs, something else, but it's definitely not fish farming. So, it's important to be aware of this. If you want to make a lot more money than you can already to invest, it's probably not the right business to go into. You have to look for something more risky. It's also important to realize this before you go into this business. So, let me reiterate once again. In order to make about 15,000 US dollars a month, you have to invest at least 450, 650,000 US dollars and sometimes even more. It all depends on your approach, your strategy and your knowledge of how to save. And probably the last thing I would like to mention, the fifth one. In order to assess the opportunities correctly, you should also think of and assess the sales. And here you should also clearly understand where you are selling this fish. Estimate the market volume. That is, for example, the market for trout is really huge. It's around 200,000 tons per year. 
which is, for example, the approximate consumption of salmon in Russia as a whole. It's 50 times less for sturgeons, which makes 4 5,000 tons a year. The consumption of caviar is around 50-60 tons a year. There is no market for African catfish at all. It still has to be created. That means that those who are farming African catfish are currently creating a completely new market. And you also need to have a clear understanding if you are going to grow a certain amount of fish, where you are going to sell and whether there is a certain number of targets customers that will buy this fish from you on a regular basis. And it's very desirable that they are local customers and are located in the surrounding areas. Well, these are probably the five basic principles, the pillars which you form your understanding of the type of fish and the farm capacity on. Let's summarize again. The first is what kind of business format you are planning – self-employment or large-scale business. The second is the assessment of your infrastructure and building. The third is assessment of your financial capacity. The fourth is assessment of your marketing and sales opportunities. Fifth is assessment of your desired income. These are the five factors, and they will give you the idea of what you choose. Now let's talk to you about how to interpret these five factors. Well, you have decided you know the region where you're expecting to build a farm. You have the approximate estimation of your sales. You have clear understanding of your funds, land, building. What should you do next? And now let's talk about fish. As each fish species has its pros and cons, and certainly farming peculiarities. Let's go! Let's now consider the pros and cons of each type of fish. I'll take a small chit chat. Don't offend, I wrote it myself. But it will be easier to navigate with its help, as there is really a lot of information. Let's start with the probably the most popular product, and the most popular fish is sturgeon. Let's go over the basic parameters. I talk about this fish quite a lot. It's grown at a temperature of 22-24 degrees Celsius, with a stocking density of up to 70 kilograms per cubic meter. The depth of tanks is relatively small, 1 meter for grow out fish of 1.5, 3 kg. Its growth rate from fry to 1.52 kg grow out fish is one year. Sturgeon is very loved and appreciated in Russia and the CIS, for example. However, the consumption of sturgeon is relatively small around the world. It's just due to the fact that in Russia we have had it that way historically. It has a high margin, with almost the same production cost slightly higher than that of trout. It has a 50% higher selling price, even the wholesale one. And it's easy enough to grow. It's a traditional fish for farming in rice. And it's not a problem to find high-quality fry. What's the downside? It already has a smaller market than trout, at least in my country. People don't eat it every day, despite the fact that it costs almost as much as the salmon and sometimes even cheaper. For some reason, people still have this prejudice that sturgeon is a holiday fish, rather expensive and so on. And it's mostly cooked for holidays. That is New Year as well as other public ones. Therefore, the sales market is small, about 4,000 tons per year, which is a relatively, let's say, moderate consumption compared to the salmons, for instance. So when should you choose farming sturgeon if you are an investor? I would say that if you want to invest between 135,000 US dollars and 1,350,000 US dollars with maximum profitability, I would opt for sturgeon. And also, if you don't want to get involved in rather complicated sales, as it's now the case with African catfish, for example, if you don't intend to also provide for deep processing, but you just want to invest profitably, I would certainly recommend sturgeon. So what is the minimum capacity? As far as farming format is concerned, I have mentioned before, it's 5 tons of self-employment, which is the very minimum I would recommend for sturgeon. And in the business format, it's around 20 tons. That's the minimum capacity I would recommend for you to make money. Well, if you are not planning a kind of wide capture of the market and its expansion, I would recommend farming 50-100 tons of grow-out fish with parallel sturgeon farming for caviar, because the sturgeon sales volume is limited anyway. With the largest and widest possible market penetration, I would recommend 200-300 tons. You should not go any further. If you are planning serious development and expansion, then 2-300 tons. Someone, of course, sells 500 tons. But frankly, you have to work for years to achieve this result. By the way, I didn't say the prime cost of farming sturgeon is 5, 5.5 US dollars, and the sale price, if you sell it live, is 9.11 US dollars for wholesale and 11.16 US dollars for retail. 
And now let's talk about farming sturgeons for caviar. It implies that you can grow sturgeons, but not up the normal grow-out weight for sale, but for caviar too, while getting a little bit of grow-out fish, sorting out which fish is for sales and which is for caviar. The temperature is the same 22-24 degrees. The tanks are also 1 meter deep, stocking density 50 kilograms per square meter. Thus, there will be lower density than for grow-out fish, because you will keep brood stock there. The maturation period for stolid in RAS is 2.5 three years for standard classic species, and these are Siberian, Russian sturgeon, best hybrid, for example, it is for six years. The prime cost of farming sturgeon caviar is 135 200 US dollars per kilogram, which is the real prime cost of one kilogram. Sales price is approximately 400 550 US dollars per kilogram, and that is the wholesale price. Of course, there is dumping, and you can find caviar for lower price, but high quality packed caviar really costs that much. And 500 and 50, 800 US dollars is retail price for one kilogram of sturgeon caviar. What are the pros of caviar in general? Well, again, I need to reiterate that caviar is in high demand. At least it's sown in Russia and the CIS countries, and caviar gives a fairly high margin. That is, if you grow sturgeon for caviar, the farm turnover in general is higher, which means that also the net profit is higher. That said, it's the same farm as if you were farming grow out fish. But what are the nuances? The nuances are that caviar is still an expensive premium product, and you have to be able to sell it. Of course, the market volume is only about 50 tons per year, maybe up to 70 at the most, if we don't take poached caviar into consideration. So what other nuances exist? First, in order to get the first caviar, you need to be patient and wait. And this is option one, to wait 4-5 years in order to get the first caviar. This is a very serious investment, as you need to invest during 4-5 years, waiting while fish is growing from fry to brood stock. Either you buy brood stock, which can be up to 50% of the cost of your entire farm in general, or you look for some intermediate options. Options. Buying, for example, grow out fish two or three year old, which is still not that expensive as purchasing brood stock, and at the same time you will save a couple of years. So it's important to understand that too. Of course, you also need a professional team, because it's one thing to buy sturgeon fry, feed it, grow it, and sell it. Actually, complicated technology and a lot of competence are not necessary in that process. And it's quite another thing to farm fish for caviar. You need an ultrasound machine. You need a qualified fish farmer, the biologist, who will determine the degree of maturity the polarization coefficient, and in this case everything will go smoothly. He will hold the brood stock in wintering, get caviar, but of course you will also need a technologist for caviar. Because imagine you obtain raw caviar and you have a question. If you don't have your own processing shop, your own technologist, then you will be selling this raw caviar for 200 US dollars per kilo, no more. Because raw caviar is not certified as food product, it's an agricultural product and doesn't have such a serious value. And you have to provide for at least your own small product processing facility and a process engineer to sell caviar in vacuum packet and then sell it properly with all the supporting documents. This is also a very significant nuance. In which case would I recommend farming sturgeon for caviar in the first place? I would probably say that if you want to produce a premium product with maximum marginality, and you clearly understand that to sell a premium product, you should have an understanding of how to do that then welcome, producing caviar is a very cool and profitable business. So what farm capacity would I recommend for caviar? For caviar, I wouldn't recommend any strict farming format at all. This if you have no experience in fish farming, you are just, so to say, plunging into this business, and at the same time you want to do everything yourself, frankly speaking, I wouldn't recommend to start with caviar at all. Because you need really high competence to grow broodstock and get the first caviar. That's why in this case, I would not consider the farming format at all. But if you want a large-scale business, the minimum I would probably start with is 500 kilograms of caviar. This is exactly the minimum I would recommend for a start, ideally at least a ton of caviar per year. This is already more or less normal adequate business. Well, the maximum? The maximum is probably 5 tons of caviar, or even 7 tons. But in this format, you need to have strong sales and marketing, as you already need to have sales. Because I know companies that produce and sell up to 10 tons of caviar per year, serious players of this market. Well, I understand how their sales are structured. It's not just one person who's selling all the amount of caviar. Of course, that's not the case. These serious sales, wholesale plus retail, including the delivery. In general, there are many things and aspects involved. And one more advice, if you are interested in caviar, but you don't see the feasibility, don't have the opportunity, you can easily start with farming grow-out fish, and then gradually shift from grow-out fish to caviar. No one forbids this, it's a perfectly normal practice. 
I wanted to give you more information, but there really is a lot of data and apparently I'll have to split this video into several parts, so don't get offended. You'll have to watch parts 2 and 3 as well. I think they will be just as interesting and useful as the first one, so watch them, they will be out soon. This is Anton Pelcher. Press the like button and subscribe to my channel, the channel on how to farm fish and earn good money from it. Bye!